What's going on, Wolfpack? My name is Dinarik Wolf, and welcome to some more Bosnia Reacts 2 History Matters. Why did Russia sell Alaska to America, United States? So, interesting question. Again, this is his third most viewed video of all time, and this is actually one I've been hearing a lot, you know, just like in general throughout my life. The first two were, you know, stuff that I never really thought about. This one I've actually have thought about before. And, well, kind of the answer to this question is obvious if you really think about it. Well, one, notice how Alaska is pretty d detached from the rest of contiguous Russia. That's one thing. But it's also way far away from the core of Russia, which is in Eastern Europe. Uh, that, that's another thing. Uh, also, this land they thought was nothing but tundras and taigas, you know, not that big of a deal. Well, at, later on, <laughs> the United States would discover a lot of coal, a lot of resources, oil as well. So, I don't know, Russia kind of shot, it, shot itself in the foot in that regard, but... In another regard, they didn't really, because they were worried that this territory will simply be annexed by Britain. Br the British forces would simply come in because, you know, Canada was a uh, part of uh, Britain at the time. They would simply go in and take over all of Alaska because Alaska was very poorly populated at the time, especially by the Russians who didn't really have that much money to, you know, invest in, in colonization of, of Alaska. So, yeah, they thought uh, best just, you know, sell it to the United States instead of, instead of Britain just waltzing right in and taking it. At least this way we can earn some money and, you know, maybe to try to pay off our debts or whatnot. But anyway, let's just get right into it. And In late 1867, Alaska was transferred from the ownership and dominion of the Russian Empire to the United States of America. It was sold for the princely sum of $7.2 million, and for most, it's just a footnote in history. A question that should be How asked money is, why today? did Russia decide to sell its overseas colony? Furthermore, why did it sell it to the United States, and why not, say, Britain or some other colonial power? So, the primary reason for the sale of Alaska was Russia's defeat in the Crimean War. Mm -hmm. The war had done several things. The first was that it had largely bankrupted Russia, which was struggling to repay the debts it had racked up in order to fight the war. The second was that the victories of the Royal Navy over the modernising Russian Navy had made it clear that Russia had a long way to go before it could challenge Britain at sea. As such, it was realised by the Russian leadership that should another war break out, there was little to stop Britain from simply conquering the territory via Canada. So, what type of territory was Alaska? For a start, it wasn't Tundra. called Alaska at the time, but simply Russian America. And for <laughs> the Russian Empire, it provided several things. First of all was the prestige that came with owning an overseas territory. As for its economic benefits, Alaska was a much more mixed bag, which combined with the cost to protect it, you can see why the sale was seen as necessary. Incidentally, the sale of Russian America was broached by Emperor Alexander II's brother, the Grand Duke Constantine, who wanted to strengthen and liberalise the empire in the wake of the defeat in the Crimean War. It didn't take much to convince the emperor to agree to the sale, but now the question was, to whom? Well, Britain was an obvious contender, given that its North American lands were already attached to Russian America, and they already had the right to navigate its waters and trade with the colony. So why didn't they sell to Britain? Well, Russia and Britain were imperial rivals, and to give Britain a large coastline so close to Russia was potentially mm. dangerous. Yeah. Also, Britain wasn't interested, since Canada is already huge and Britain had enough access to the Pacific Ocean. Thus, the United States of America was really the only likely candidate for the purchase. Mm. Russia had approached the US in the early 1860s concerning the purchase, but they were undergoing this little-known event called the American Civil War, uh, and yeah. so were a bit busy. After the war was settled and the US had to deal with the issues of reconstruction, the purchase of a Alaska was seen as a useful hmm. distraction. Well, uh, one thing I should notice, like, uh, one people that, that are wondering, like, oh, if uh, Russia managed to hold on to Alaska, you know, and during the Cold War, they could have had military bases very close to the United States at the time. Well, they, they never really thought about it at the time because uh, it was still the 1800s uh, when we still had the empire of Russia and, you know, the United States. The United States was still not a superpower in any regard, and neither was really Russia. But later on, they both would become superpowers and rivals towards each other. At the time, they had no idea that was going to happen. Like, for the United States, Russia is a far away country, all the way in Eastern Europe, basically. And for the Russians, the Americas were a far away country, way across the Pacific and Atlantic, I guess. So, they thought, like, eh, why not sell it to the United States? So, you know, we'll be good buds in the future. Soon they will find out. 
The Russian Empire was also keen to keep up the ongoing good relations with the Americans, because as an ally they would be useful. It was agreed in March 1867 between the governments of the US and Russia that Alaska would be bought, but how did they come up with the price? Well, Russia had sent a team of surveyors to look for things like natural resources and to see how good life in Alaska was. And it was determined that Alaska was worth about $10 million. However, the surveyors argued that Alaska shouldn't be sold at all and that the governance of it simply be reformed. The emperor ignored this and both sides mm, negotiated until the sum of $7.2 million was agreed. In October 1867, it was transferred to America and Russia's attention would thereafter be focused to the south and to the west. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching. Well, that's that's basically it. Simple, simple as that. Now, um, there were still Russians, I guess you can call them Russian, Russian colonists living there when the Americans moved over to colonize them. You know, there, there were still some Russians living there. And there, even to this day, I believe some Russian Orthodox people living in Alaska, but m most of them either like moved back into Russia or, or was poorly settled in general. So there weren't many Russians to begin with. They just kindly integrated with American society and that, that that's about it, I guess. Now, uh, even if they managed to hold on to it all the way to the Cold War, I'm not so sure how threatening that would be to the United States because even during the Cold War, it would be such a poorly populated place. I guess they could have military bases close to the United States, but that would just give the United States a bigger reason to, you know, blow them up, I guess. So, and they would be at the huge disadvantage because the United States was a much more powerful naval power. So they could, they could just kind of blockade them and just, it, I don't know. I don't know how useful it really would have been uh, if they really held on to it all the way up until the, you know, the Cold War against the Americans or they probably would have ended up losing it to the Brit to the Brits in like the first or I don't know second world wars maybe they would have moved in to kindly grab it and then hold on to it I don't know I don't know um, that's for the alternate alternate history channels but uh, anyway I'll thank you all for watching and as always take care